Good evening. The last two days in lab, we were working on a rather complicated uh, setup in which we had a car on a flat ramp. I guess it would be a car on a uh, street with a hanging mass over the side. And your first goal was to calculate the acceleration of the car. This was done with simple kinematics. We would pick our kinematic equation, x is x naught, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. As long as we keep the car at rest, this goes away and this goes away, which would then allow us to solve for the acceleration of the car at one half a t squared. Depending on your frame of reference, if you had it moving to the right, it would be a positive acceleration, or moving to the left, it would be a negative acceleration. That was really just uh, what your frame of reference was. After you did that, you were then tasked with find the tension in the string. Something to keep in mind for this top section here, we treated the system as a whole. So the acceleration of the system was whatever this value was that you calculated under goal number one, which means that both the mass and the car were both accelerating. Something that would be useful to help us find the tension in the string is step one on our flow chart, right? So we identify the system. Well, we have two things that we can really look at uh, we have, first of all, the system that included the hanging mass. So the force of the earth on the mass moving down was greater than the force of the string on the mass pointing upwards. And the reason why is because the mass accelerated in the downward direction. Our other system was the force of the earth on the car, and I drew this arrow bigger to show that the force of the earth on the car was likely bigger than the force of the hanging mass. Force of the track on the car. Coming in this back direction, we have the force of the track on the car again, that was friction. Moving forwards, we have a much larger force of tension or force of string on the car as our velocity was moving in that direction. So just based off of the picture, we have two different force diagrams. We are tasked with finding the force of tension, which is the force of the string, either on the car or on the mass. And so that kind of leaves us with which one are we going to go with? And the correct answer is using the force uh, on the mass as our uh, calculation. And the reason why is because if we write out equilibrium statement in the y direction, so the force in y equal to zero, so the sum of the forces in the y direction would be the negative force of E on the car plus the positive force of tension on the car is equal to zero. That statement is true. If we take a look, we are accelerating in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction would be equal to mass times acceleration. We're interested in an individual force, not a net force. So the individual forces in the x direction dictates the fact that we need to expand this so the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the negative force of tension on the car plus the positive force of the string on the car is equal to ma. If you notice, we can figure out the mass of the car. That's not a problem. The acceleration we calculated out using our kinematic in goal number one but what we don't know is the force of tension and the force of friction on the car. So neither one of those values can be uh, used and that gives us an equation with two variables missing. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the force of uh, the, the hanging mass as our system. 
So there are no forces in the x direction, so we ignore that. We do know that we are Newton's second law in the y direction, so that's ma. However, again, we're looking at an individual force, so we need to take and we need to break out the sum of the forces. So the net force in the x direction is equal to the negative force of the earth on the mass plus the positive force of the string on the mass is equal to mass times acceleration. This force of earth on the mass is simply the force of gravity. So if this is force of gravity, we know that the force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity, and that's going to be negative, plus the force of the string on the mass is equal to mass times acceleration. I think some of you landed at about uh, 100 grams is the mass that you chose, which means when we convert that into kilograms, it would be about 0.1 kilogram. So we would take 0 0.1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared, and specifically that's a negative 10 meters per second squared, plus the force of the string on the mass is equal to mass times acceleration. What this gives us is the ability, and we know this, we said it was 0.1 kilograms, and the acceleration was calculated up in goal number one with our kinematic, what this allows us to solve for is the force of tension or the force of the string on the mass. A couple of things that we can keep in mind is that if we go back to our force diagram, the force of the string on the mass is pointing upwards. Since the force of the string on the mass is pointing up, we know that this value here that we calculate has to be positive. If we get a negative number, we've made a mistake. Once we find this force in Newtons, we can then take it and bring it up into this force here and solve ultimately what was the final goal is to determine friction. So these are important things that we're gonna be able and wanna be able to do, if not for uh, just the general sake of knowledge then for the test that is on next Wednesday. So I want to give you another problem to go ahead and try. And this one will uh, really test and see if you've got that kind of uh, picture. And so what I, what I want you to try is to uh, determine the acceleration of the following setup. And that setup is two boxes, box A and box B are being pulled to the right. A couple things. Box A is 10 kilograms. Box B is 5 kilograms. Friction is, let's say, 3 newtons. And the force applied to the right is 11 newtons. So you need to determine the acceleration and then determine the tension in the string. Between the boxes. Please see your instructor for any questions on this additional practice problem.